built of ashlar, Raven's Craig Castle sits on a triangular promontory overlooking the Firth of Forth on the fringes of Kirkcaldy in Fife. Now a ruin, it was originally built to be home to James II's wife, Mary of Gelders, and later became a Sinclair stronghold. Work began on the castle in 1460, when James granted the lands of Dysart to his queen. He commissioned David Boys, his master of works, to carry out its construction, but he was never to see it complete. The king was killed five months later, following the siege at the English-held Roxburgh Castle. Within three years, Mary too was dead, and it was still incomplete, although it must have been habitable, as in 1461 some of her staff lived there for a short time. Whether she lived there for any length of time is unknown. Following her death, all work stopped, although the East Tower was pretty much complete. The front of the castle was to have two hydron towers, much like those at Linlithgow or Bothwell, flanking a lower section of the castle, which was to house the Great Hall. However, only the ditch and the curtain wall, the East Tower with its three floors, and the foundation of the rest of the complex were completed at the time of the Queen's death. The tower was to house domestic accommodation above a lower vault, with the two main upper floors each housing a chamber accessed separately, unlike most other royal residences. The attic above consisted of two smaller rooms. William Sinclair, the first Earl of Caithness, was granted the lands and castle seven years later in a trade with James III. He exchanged his castle in Kirkwall and his Earl of Orkney title for it, and work began once more, although to an altered design. He commissioned the construction of the West Tower, accessed separately via a four-stair from the rest of the main front of the building, and the ground floor vaults in the central range of the castle, possibly with a view to military use. This central block of Ravenscraig had two vaulted cellars at ground level, with a porter's lodge placed at either side of the central entranceway. Above was an artillery platform, a suggestion that it was becoming fortified against enemy attack. All the gun holes were built during this phase of works. It was built more in line with traditional Scottish tower houses with a series of floors to be used independently from the main castle. Behind the main facade, ancillary buildings were constructed on the promontory. A postern on the eastern side allowed access to the beach below. At the southernmost tip, it is thought a gun tower had once overlooked the fourth. William Sinclair died in 1480, but his son William, viewed as a wastrel, inherited only Ravenscraig, not the titles. But his heirs, the Earls of Roslyn, are known to have used this western tower as their principal home until they abandoned it in the mid-17th century, when they moved to the nearby Dysart House. During this time, improvements were made in the two towers. The upper levels were remodelled, including the building of latrines over the cliff edge. A beehive dovecot was also constructed on the shore. During the Civil War, Oliver Cromwell's troops attacked the castle 
1650. It remained in Sinclair hands until 1898, when the then Sinclair Erskine family sold it to the local linoleum magnate, Sir Michael Nairn. The Nairn family gifted it and 85 acres of the estate to Kirkcaldy, resulting in the nearby Ravenscraig Park in 1929. During World War I, the castle was used as a munitions store and in 1955 it came into state care. On 4th October 1954, the site had been inspected by the Ordnance Survey when it was found to be neglected and covered in vegetation. However, much of the structure was still in fair condition. In 1964, excavation works were begun by the Ministry of Public Building and Works at the same time as remedial works were being carried out on the structure. A rock-cut ditch to the north landward side was discovered, but it seems it was never completed. The foundations of several buildings were also unearthed behind the main front of Ravenscraig, including a kiln. Pottery was also discovered during the dig. It also has thick walls at its front with gun holes, but this appears to have been one of the later alterations made to the castle, probably due to the rise of threat of attack, but it is believed to be one of the first in Scotland built due to this threat of gunpowder fire. Among those to visit the castle were James V and his wife, Mary of Guise, in April 1540, as they made their way to Falkland Palace. And in 1598, the Duke of Holstein went to the castle with James VI, Master of Works, William Shaw. Ravenscraig was also associated with John Paul Jones, father of the American Navy during the American Revolution in the 18th century. He had been born in 1747 and worked on slave ships, making a considerable sum of money before quitting and calling the trade abominable. He returned to Scotland in 1779 on a 40-gun warship, Bonhomme Richard, heading up the west coast, past Orkney and down to the east coast. He had received information that the East Coast towns were vulnerable to attack and it was his plan to attack Leith, then demand a large ransom. His ships entered the fourth, but at Kirkcaldy the local minister, the Reverend Robert Shearer, called his congregation to pray with him for a miracle on the beach. Suddenly a severe storm broke out and Jones had to give up. Due to the incident, local young women would light fires at Ravenscraig Castle when the men of Path Head kept armed watch and ward nightly for the return of Paul Jones. He never did return. Ravenscraig Castle is open to the public, although the towers are inaccessible except on rare occasions. Historic Environment Scotland care for the castle and it is a scheduled ancient monument. <laughs>